All right, well, you may see I'm editing this video and I'm going to insert this here because I realize it's kind of a long video. And, uh, and if you've come to this video, it's probably because you own a Honda Fit and you're getting this loud screeching noise upon a cold start in the morning. So I was having the same problem too, and I believe this video can save you some money. So I found the problem. The problem is, is in the bushing in the Bendix. It, it gets worn and it makes all this racket. The, the, the bearing itself begins to wallow on the shaft can't buy the Bendix, you can't buy the bushing. I went to a local machine shop, had one made, but I was wanting to insert this. I'm hoping somebody who watches watch this video will also be a machinist. And if they have the same starter, they can easily crank out some extra bushings. Maybe they make 20 or 30 of these things. If you throw them on eBay or throw them on um, Etsy, uh, send me the link and I'll put it below this video because it would be, I mean, it'll save you. What, I, think the, I think the OEM starters are retail 700 bucks. So if you can get, you know, just a five, ten dollar bushing, it'll keep you from buying a new starter. So I just wanted to point that out. But in the video, I'm going to show you exactly how to tear the starter completely down, and you can completely reassemble it yourself. Don't need any special tools. Pretty easy to do. Um, and also, I'm, I'll add a, a, a link to a better video that actually shows you. I didn't make a video on removing the starter, but I must add a link to a good video I found on on the removal of the of the starter. A lot of videos show you removal and the replace of the starter, but no one that I found does a teardown like this or, or it addresses the problem. A lot of people are spending a lot of money on new starters when all you need is just this little bushing. And on and and toward the end, let me see here if I can get this video. Yeah. You can see some of the footage here where I tear the starter down. I looked at the brushes. The brushes are still pretty good shape. Clean up the commentator. But you know, step by step, clean everything up reassemble all everything and then I give you some tips on some tools needed to get the starter back in the car and things that will help you out and then at the end I do a cold start really it's a really cold morning you can see frost on the window and you can see uh, there at the end the sound is now gone and in fact it's been five months since I made this repair and it's still whisper quiet no more noise all right on with the show all right, so now I've got the starter out of the car. I'm going to try to mimic that sound. I can usually only get that sound on a cold morning, a cold start. So we got my battery hooked up here. I got my little jumper wire. I just jumped from the solenoid over to the hot, and it will engage just like it would when it's in the car. So it almost just sounds a little bit dry to me. So I don't know if it's just a matter of grease or if we really need a new Bendix. Could be a war, war bushing, maybe, making that shaft uh, kind of wallow and vibrate in, in the end. I don't know. But it does seem silly. I forget these starters are $500 or three. It's, they're crazy new OEM starters, crazy expensive. So I'm going to take this apart. We know the starter motor itself is fine. There's just something up with the Bendix, the bearing. Something's making this weird noise on a cold start. So uh, I'm just going to take it all apart, dig into it, and see what I see. Well, first of all, let me back up and show you how I've got this hooked up. If you want to bench test a starter, quite simple. I've just got a little uh, lawnmower battery here. Got my got my, some jumpers on it. Got the uh, positive button over here to the battery cable. And... We have our solenoid. You got your small wire on the solenoid. And this get, just got me a little jumper. And by not touch this positive, well, it doesn't matter if I touch it here. If I touch it over over here, it's going to do the same thing. So. I'm mimicking just like, like what would happen in the car when you turn the key all the way over. So let's get this apart. So to get this apart, we just need a 12 millimeter socket here for the battery cable. Get off here. Let me get me a trace. I put my goodies in. All right, you got the other 12 millimeter here on the bottom of the solenoid. Got to watch. I noticed when I took this loose, it kind of twisted that connection a little bit. So I kind of tugged on it. Be mindful of that. Okay, 
and the larger nut goes on the battery cable the sh sh more shallow nut goes down here on the bottom of the solenoid and then we just got two takes 10 millimeter socket take these two nuts loose and See if the solenoid will come out. So the solenoid, its job is to make the big nuts go in and out. All right, get them loose. But I'm going to, have to get this wire loose. I'm going to, have to take two wire. I mean, two fingers here and wiggle this loose first. All right, so this took a little finessing. I took me a little hook here and I kept working it because you have to kind of work these wires over the threads. I had never seen one made this way before, but it's pretty unique. I guess it gets you a really good connection the way they wind that wire around it. But when you tighten down on it, it kind of squeezes the wire down to the threads. So I got that out of the way. And there's a solenoid. Easy enough. All right, we know the solenoid's good. Now let's uh, clear my bench off, get a little more space. We'll get these two bolts out. And first of all, I'm going to take me a punch, make me a couple marks here. So I know everything goes back together the right way. Okay, I changed my mind. I decided not to take a hammer and make a punch on these things because I remembered all these newer starters that have permanent magnets in there. And it don't take much to crack them. So if you tap this thing, you break a magnet, you're done. So if you'll see, I, said, except I just took me a triangle file, filed me a little notch on both sides. So I know exactly which way it goes back together. And I notice this thing has a line on it too, so it probably needs to go one way. So I put an arrow on it, so I know that goes points toward the Bendix. So I know to, uh, to reassemble this thing. And I put me a couple scratch marks here to line up with that. So that way I know I'll put it back together the correct way. Don't get corn fused. Okay, all that's left now is two eight millimeter bolts. Get this off, and then the, the brushes will probably jump out at us. I'm kind of curious to see what shape the brushes are in after I think about 75,000 miles, which seems kind of well short life for a starter. I expect more 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 out of a Honda. Um, something didn't I? All right. Well I can see some grease there on my on the on the Bendix on the spiral gear that throws it out. And I think I see a little dab of grease on the end of that. But maybe it's got some wear down in there. It's hard to see down there. There we go. Alright, so let me get this in the vise a little bit better and try to get this brush cap off. Alright, because I've never taken this type of starter apart before, I'm going to pull these Phillips screws loose first, thinking that will leave my brushes in place, because if I go lift it up, up on this, I know those brushes are going to jump out of the springs. So let me get those two Phillips screws loose and see what we see. So I first started to take these screws loose with a Phillips screwdriver, but it tried to round out on me. I surely didn't want to do that. So what I did, I took, um, let me show you here. Because on little screws like this, you only got one shot, and I wanted, I wanted to use my little electric impact to get it loose. So what I did, I took this, and I took a hammer and tapped it down so I knew it was seated all the way down, good, good and tight. Then I set the impact on top of it, and unscrewed it, popped it, popped it right, right loose, a couple of hits, and came off without stripping the screws out. Because they felt like they wanted to strip on me initially, because they are some small little screws. Alright. Put those in the little tray. Now, let me see here. Alright, I need to reposition this in the, in the vise. All right, so the moment of the truth, we're going to see this at the same time together because the first time this thing's been off at 75,000 miles. Woo-wee! That don't look so good, does it? My goodness. It's full of creeping crud. Well, it's a good thing I got into the, to this. My, my. 
That's shocking. Now something I've always done throughout my life with any vehicle that I've had, we usually when you get about 90,000, that's when I will go ahead and pull the starter off. I did it on my Nissan, my Corvette, what else is it? A uh, little, uh, little Chevy Spectrum Sport we have. When you hit about 90,000, I'd pull the starter off, go ahead and put new brushes in and rebuild them, put them back on. And by doing that, I've never had, never got stranded because of a starter issue. Um, but this one, man, at 75,000, it don't look so good at all. So, um, yeah, not, not much brush, brush life left in this. Okay, how are we going to get that off without making a mess? Well, I guess there's no way, it's just, they're just going to jump, we'll just have to let them jump. Let him jump. Hope he doesn't fly anywhere. No, I gotta pull this brush loose. It's holding me. Alright, so I gotta get this spring pulled back. Let me show you what I what I'm doing here. I took my little pick tool and I pulled my spring back out of the way. So I pulled the spring back. So that gives me so I'm reaching here. Pull this brush out. that out of there and I got one on the other side most likely so I got to do the same over here then I can get this brush plate uh, loose All right, I just did the same trick pulled that little spring back and so there are our brushes but it seems to have more brush life but I don't know how long how long they was when they were new but we sure do have a lot of debris in here that had to come from the brushes. It does something. I always rather li I, I like rebuilding the OEM starter whenever you have the opportunity. If you're on the road and your starter fails, don't let your o OEM starter away from you because it's a genuine Honda starter. Because a lot of times any of the aftermarket stuff you buy is not going to be as good. So if, if when you get home, get time. Take your starter to a good rebuilder, let them rebuild it, and I think you'll be better better off uh, keeping the OEM starter. Don't let them have your OEM starter as a core. Hang on to it. Oh, now check this out. I'm learning something new all the time. I've never seen a starter do this, but it separates in the middle. Oh, I see now. Oh, I bet it's got a gear reduction in it. That's why we got the... Man, ain't that... Okay, so this does not have permanent magnets. It's got the whinies in it. Some do, some don't. All right. So, alrighty, but boy, she's a, a mess. Okay, yeah, we got a little gear reduction going on inside of that. Interesting, interesting. Boy, she's a dirty bird. I have to get this get this cleaned up, cleaned up good. So before I go cleaning this starter, I want to document its number in case I rub the numbers off of it. So what is that part number there? Can you read it? 428000-5410. There's a other number below it. That one's kind of tough to see. See, it's a 12 something. Oh, maybe it's 12V. That blue's in the way. Maybe it's just 12 volt, I guess, would be my assumption. And this other number, don't know if it, what it means. It's like it's a 2N11, possibly. Focus, focus. Yep, looks like a 2N11. Maybe it's a date code or something. Anyway, we documented that, didn't we? Okay, let me show you a poor man's lathe. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to try to clean up the uh, commentator. I believe that's the word for it. So this here is 400 grit, then this is 1,000 grit. So let me show you with one hand how this is going to work. I think I can do this with one hand. Let's see. Let's get a plan here. Let's fold this like this. I think that'll work. All right, so now let's turn it on.
Can I put your kitten? get two hands on this and finish it up all right now for my next trick next trick I want to get this Bendix off because I'm thinking that's my where our noise is coming from I'm, I think this bushing is bad I'm assuming there's a bushing in there so I me a socket there's gonna be a little, little round ring in here that's gonna hold that in place give me a little hammer give it a little love tap No, a little bit more. Started to move. There it went. All right, so now I just got to get this ring removed. Give me a screwdriver in there and try to open it up and get that ring off. And I can get this Bendix off that shaft. Let me tell you, that took entirely longer than it should. I finally, I think I'm about to get it, get it loose here. There it goes. About to get it. All right, now. Okay, push it out. I can feel it right ready to let loose. I just want to make sure I don't lose a goofy thing. Okay, got it. There it is. Yeah, that was kind of a boogered to get out. Kind of, kind of a more of a pain than it should have been. But I finally got it. The way I did it, well when the ring is in there, I took one screwdriver, held it like this, pinched it, then at the same okay, let me just show you another way. I had it pinched on the shaft on one side. And while while I was pinching it with one screwdriver, I took another and came in and push this this one open until I got this got the got rid of the circle kind of made it more like a C once I got it opened up then I could get it out of that groove but it took a little trial and error to get a system don't know if that's the best system or not but it worked for me okay so I finally got down to the part I think is our weak link is right inside there is that bushing I believe that is what's causing our racket. That bushing gets worn over time. And that shaft. Let me get a micrometer on it, see if I can measure any anywhere. I'm going to get the snap ring loose so I can get this shaft completely out of that uh, gear reduction housing. So to remove this shaft, just get you some little snap ring pliers. And release that snap ring. And it should slide right out. We got there. Is that one washer? Yep. One washer and a snap ring. Lay that down there. Okay. Loose. Now, try to get that out. I imagine that plastic gear should fall out. I hold my mouth just right. Well, I'm not doing it right with one hand, evidently. All right, here's what I want to really check out. Get my micrometer on there and see if I can detect anywhere if that's what's causing our trouble. So the shaft seems to be in good shape. Can't really perceive anywhere on it. All the way up and down it feels the same. I think the shaft is just fine. I do believe we got, we got trouble is in the Bendix because it does have 
Look at that, look at that slot. Can you hear it? And I believe on a cold morning, tolerances are loose. And we get that awful racket. Once it warms up, the rest of the day it's fine. But now, can we get a Bendix or can we get a new bushing for it? I think all we need is just that bushing. That'd be sweet if we could get a little $2 bushing. Cheaper than a new starter. If my theory is correct, that remains to be seen. I think we're on to something. Trying to get a better shot of that bushing in there. Get the light on it just right, you see. Come on. And it, it don't go in there too dang. I get the light on it just right. There you go. See, that, see where it ends? The bushing is not very wide at all. Maybe about a quarter inch. So that is the weak link. There's plenty of space down there to have a longer bushing. Maybe. Maybe not, because maybe they got to shorten it because of this. Let's see here. No, there's plenty of room. There's no reason why they couldn't put a longer bushing in there. Because that bushing only goes down about a quarter inch. So not much surface area. I think I've read on the forums where some people have removed their starter and grease them. Uh, or grease this Bendix. And it worked for a while, but then it's, you know, after a while it starts making racket again. And I could see that would, you know, because it's not solving the problem. I could see you get a little grease in there to cushion it for a little while. Uh, but you like long on a cold morning, your tolerances are loose. As soon as you start the engine up at first, it gets it warmed up. The shaft expands, it gets a little bit larger. This ID shrinks a little bit. So that's all it takes, just slightly. That's where we only hear it in the morning on a cold start. The rest of the day, it's fine. So I think we're on to something here. If we can only get a bushing, or if we can only get, if we can get a replacement Bendix. And there is a number on here, 8870. Well, I'll take this to my starter buddy tomorrow who rebuilds these things. Maybe he can educate me on what our options are. Oh, and did you ever know how a bendit kind of works? It's, it's like a one-way clutch. Because um, you got rollers in here. And so one way they'll grip, like this way it's tight. This way it freewheels. So once the engine starts, it will freewheel. And then it'll, it'll kick it back down on that spiral. Kick it out of the way. So, I mean, that part works fine. I think all we need is a bushing if we can get one. So let me finish cleaning my stuff up and get things ready to go. Alright, you see all my pieces parts. If you're wondering how I got them so clean, I just used some uh, this brake parts cleaner from Walmart. And I'd spray it while it was still wet. I'd go here to my trash can and my air hose and, and blast it while it was wet. It does a really good job of uh, blowing all the crud off and getting it good and dry. So everything's nice and clean. Uh, a couple things I left some grease on because I want to ask my starter guy. Uh, I know some parts like this spiral here, it had lithium, lithium grease. This part had lithium grease, and you may have noticed when I took it apart, this thing fell out. Of course, there's no worries; it only goes in one way anyway, so you can't mess it, can't mess up on that. Uh, but then I noticed uh, in here it had like a gray grease on the the gear reduction, had a different type of grease than what was on the the spiral in the other parts of the starter. So I wanted to pick his brain about what is the proper grease to use on reassembling these, and. Uh, See if we can't get us some new brushes. And I was still like I was shocked at how much wear was on that on that thing. Or how much debris was in there. I mean it still looks like we got some brush life. But yeah, maybe we can compare a new set. It may look a whole lot worse than what I'm thinking once we get a new set co to compare it to. So I'm gonna put all this in a little little box and uh go see my buddy tomorrow and see what we can learn. So I'm sitting here looking at these parts and just thinking about this situation. And the term coming to mind, planned obsolescence. You know, because there's plenty, I took this little tool here. Yeah, straighten up. Because you can feel down in here, you can feel where, the, where it stops. You can go way down in there. You know, heck, another inch of travel, you could put a long bushing. That thing would never wear out. But to me, that's a really good 
example of planned obsolescence. They know they put this little skinny bushing in there, and the, that way, like it, you know, like for us, 75,000 miles, starter starts making a racket. You're going to have to, if you go OEM, I forget how much it is, $500 for a starter, something crazy, all for a goofy little bushing that they could have made a lot longer. In fact, if you look close here, you can see where it runs. Um, look at this lay still. So you can see, I've got grease on it. So out there with the bush, that's the stopping point. So the bush normally runs, that's kind of its park position here. When it's engaged, it runs up to here. But we still have all this smooth shaft another inch down. We have plenty of room for a bushing. But they opted not to. And so now, you know, imagine how many starters get sold a year for all the Honda fit, all the Hondas. I don't know what all this starter fits, but I know it fits the Honda fit. This I'm working on the Honda fit 2011. So there's many thousands of these starters out there. And all they need is a little bushing, I believe. Interesting. How interesting. I, I just found another way to illustrate how much play is on this, in, in this little bushing here. So check this out. You really can see how much slop it has. So hopefully I can get a new bushing for this and get it tightened up. Yep, I think that's the source of our noise. So I got back from the uh, my starter rebuilder place that rebuilds starters all the time. He looked at all this, said everything looked great. He said my brushes look great. I got plenty of life left in them, so I don't have to do anything there. Um, he didn't have a Bendix, didn't have a bushing. So now I'm, you can see I've started tapping on it here. See it's partially out. So what I'm doing, I'm just sitting this on top of this socket and got me a punch. Just slowly driving the, I'll tap it this way, then tap it that way until I get it out. Once I get it out, I'm going to mic it, see what the size is, see if I can find a bushing online. If not, uh, i got a friend of mine, we might just make one. But we're going to see if we can't make this better without spending. I looked it up, a new OEM starter like $700. I think uh, the rebuilt starters come in at over $300, a, a re rebuilt Honda starter. Uh, so pretty pricey. Well, as you can see, it came out quite easy. It's just a few taps. The bushing is out. But look down in that bore. Now, Honda, if they wanted to, they could have made that bushing three times as, as long with a whole lot more surface area. So I'm going to do some, get my micrometers out, do some measurements, see if it's possible to find a bushing. If not, I'll see if we just can't make one and go from there. Facing it off? Yeah, it's facing. Yeah. Yep. So you see, I'm back home. I got my bushing made. Slides on the shaft nice and smooth. So I'm about to put this on here. I'll stick it in the vise, press it together, and I'll start putting the starter back, reassembling the starter. Um, but I would suggest, <coughs> I would suggest, you know, if you don't get one of these made, because Mike and this thing can be kind of tricky, you know, getting it just right. I would uh, take your starter part, take your shaft, take your Bendix to your local machine guy and say, hey, make me a bush and it'll fit this. Uh, I'll mic it here again for you. So I'm coming in at, this is coming in at 519 thousandths outside diameter. The shaft being coming in at 429. So your specs may vary. But you get the idea. I guess generally you probably want about, about 1,000th clearance on these bushings. Uh, a machinist could tell you better. But uh, that looks a lot smoother. Gonna be, I think it's going to be a lot tighter. It's going to get rid of all, the, all that racket, all that noise we had before. So let me get my vise set up. All right, you see what I'm doing here? Got it in the vise. And just press it in. 
nice and snug. There we go. That's all you got to do. Alright, now that looks so much better. Remember all the sloppy play we had in that before? See, now I'm trying to get it. I mean, I can just barely feel a little click. Nice and snug. I think that's going to make us a lot better starter. Nice and smooth. I like it, I like it. So my buddy who rebuilt starters, who's been rebuilding starters for 40 years, gave me some grease to use as I put this back together. He said that he buys this by like a 50 gallon barrel or something, five gallon barrel, he said. And uh, it's Mobile One Synthetic Grease. I wanted to test it to see how it did because it's a refrigerator, as you can see, it, it's like 10 below zero right now. And I wanted to see how it acted, but it's still nice and pliable. So that's why I was curious about how this grease would act especially on that you know on that planetary where those little gears are and you have a real cold morning for cold start but evidently this must be some good stuff so whatever grease you choose this might be a good test make sure it remains pliable when it's uh, really really cold so I'm gonna take it out of the freezer now let it warm up so I can uh, put this starter back together okay well it's reassembly time hope I got enough light down here it looks good and that's what I need to tell you updates. Okay, when I went to uh, talk to my buddy who's been rebuilding starters for 40 years, I think he told me, um, I mentioned to him how I polished this with like a uh, first 400 grit than a thousand. He said 400 is plenty. In fact, he, he likes 400 better because it gives the brushes a little bit to bite into. So I went back and did, did 400 on it, uh, you know, just chew it up. And also take your little toothpick here and Clean out all the clean out all the grooves. Make sure there's no little crud and dust in there. So I'm gonna do that next. Get all that done. It'll take just a minute or two, and then I'll get my grease out here that he gave me and start lubing things up and uh, reassembling. All right, I got all that cleaned out real good. Got all the old carbon out between the. I believe that's called the commentator. So let's move a few things out of the way. First of all, I want to put my planetary back together. That should be my first step. All right, let's get a little bit of grease here. This little dowel rod may help facilitate applying the grease on things. Keep in mind, this is not my day job, but I've been in starters before and had pretty good luck taking them apart and putting them back together, together and they always work. So, but I'm always up to learn something else. So that's why I try to talk to people who do this for a living, try to gain a little bit more knowledge. But uh, better than buying a new, what is that, through Honda, I think they said $700 for this OEM starter. And like I mentioned before, you always want to keep your OEM starter because you, if you buy an aftermarket starter, they make these starters as cheap as like I think eighty bucks on Amazon. But I bet if you if you buy one on Amazon and take it apart, you, you'll find instead of having four brushes in here, well, that's showing two, but the, the brush plate, you got four brushes. If you buy one of those cheap ones, you take it apart, you may only find you have two brushes. They're just built super super cheap. Just uh. And these and this Honda fit it's somewhat of a pain to get that starter in and out something I don't want to do very often and really surprised that it that it's conked out on me at such low miles being um, 75,000 seems kind of low to me all right that feels good let me get my get my little dab of grease on this washer and I gotta get my snap ring in place I'm going to grab my snap ring pliers. Good deal. Snapped in place. 
All right, now let's uh, see about getting those planetaries put in there. Well, here you go. Mistake number one, being a greenhorn that I am, I have to put this in first. So, it's been like a week since I took this apart. So, and there's a little notch here, you notice. So, I'm going to try to line this notch up with it as I put it down in there. I figured that'd be wise. There it goes. Locked in good. Alrighty. Now let's try putting this back together the correct way. I'm going to put me some more grease on there just for good measure. Alright now, now let's put the snap bearing back on there for the second time. That's how you learn, you mess up. That looks a lot better. Alright, let's get us plenty of grease in here. I figure that's pretty important in this planetary. Because we've got a little pilot bearing. Whoops, hit the camera. We've also got a little pilot bearing in here too. That the armature itself spins on. So we want to make sure it's lubed up good. This ain't no way to be neat about this, is there? I'm trying to do a little different technique. I wish I had like a little brush, but I don't I think that's the way the professionals would do it. But I got a little popsicle stick here. It's going to work. Just want to make sure I get them in all around those gear teeth. Of course, on these these shafts. I have seen some people use lithium grease, but I'm just going by what a professional told me who's been doing this for 40 years. Now, it, it did see on the spiral here. Well, it's on the back side, the, the part that throws out the Bendix. When I took it apart. Um, it had a lithium grease on it. it had a different grease in here but but on that spiral it had a lithium so I may go back with lithium on that. Where's my little gears at? There we go. Give it a spin here from the bottom side. Because when I took it apart, it looked to have about this same amount of grease. It wasn't plumb full. That should be more than enough. Just so you have an idea of how this works, this is going to go down here when you. When you hit the ignition key and to start it, man, this thing goes 100 miles an hour, goes to that gear reduction, then the Bendix turns a little bit slower. So I'm wondering why, you know, most vehicles I've been into, the brushes usually go for a good 100,000 miles or, 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 or more before they need replacing. But my assumption is these gear reduction models, this, this 
they've got a lot more rotation over that 75,000 miles over the life versus a direct drive like the old like for those Chevy uh, 350s that had just a big direct drive you didn't have this gear reduction stuff so uh, that's just a I guess the new and improved way of doing things but before we put this in we've got to put this in remember that little notch I think you can see it there 12 o'clock position get that plate in there like that That looks good. There we go. Let's go put the uh, fields in. And remember to look closely. See, there's that notch. I've got it turned at 12 o'clock position here. Just like that. All right. Now, I'm trying to keep my fingers clean after doing that. Let me clean my fingers before I start mucking with these brushes. Alright, because I'm not a professional, and I really don't know what I'm doing, I'm just kind of winging this. And I don't have the fancy tools that probably professional starter builders have. i got to figure out a way to hold these brushes back while I'm putting it together. Now, the brushes that remain on the, the card here are easy enough. You just pull it back and let the spring contact it here and it holds it back out of the way. But the brushes over here are going to be a little bit more of a pain. Because when this goes together, it's got to go together like this. And I got to be able to pull back this spring and get these other two brushes in there. So you kind of get the idea how I did it with this one. I'm going to try to get this on camera if I can do it. Okay, there we go. Now I think we're working. There may be an easier way, but this is just my way, I guess. Alright, get back in the camera. Alright, so that gives me room. Now I can drop that in there. And with just a little bit of pressure, open this up, and the brush should slide right in. That's in theory. Let's see how it works in reality. Spring tension, spring tension. Now let me think about this for a minute. I gotta make sure. So I got these two mounting holes here. I don't think it matters. Okay, yeah. I don't believe it matters because I gotta line them up with these two holes here. All right then. Can we see what we're trying to accomplish? I get this brush over here like this. Trying to do this and look in the camera at the same time. Ooh, hey, that worked out pretty smooth. A lot easier than I thought it was going to. Let's try the other one. All right, why are you why are you being a pain? Oh, that was. I wasn't pushing down low enough. There it goes. All right. I'll pull out that popsicle stick. Pull out that popsicle stick. All right. So those two brushes are made contact. All right. Now the other two. Then all I have to do is just push in. Let me come on. Get, get in the camera. See how that one snapped in. Let's try to snap the other one. Uh, got one more to go. Alright, can we see what we're doing? Let me try something. Let me get me another tool here. This brush has a lot of pre uh, the spring has a lot of pressure on that brush. I just want to relieve some of that pressure before I push into it because I don't want the brush or the spring digging into the brush. Okay, there it went. All right, so we've got all four springs in position. All right, that looks 
good. I like that. So if I did this correctly, this cap should go on there and I should line up with these two little screws. Oh, no, wait a minute. We got to put some grease on this, don't we? About got ahead of ourselves just a little bit. And then the camera shot here. Just get me a dab more grease. Poke it in that hole. Oh, that looks like a little, maybe it's too much. Let me wipe some of this off here. Okay. That should do. All right, where's my toothpick? Pretty close. Let me get something a little bit stronger than a toothpick. All right, got me an awl. So I can just move us over a tick. Uh, get me a Phillips screwdriver. Come here. Snug. Get the other one in there. All right. That's done. Now we can work on the other end. All right, time for the Bendix part. Now, when I took this apart, and you can still see in there a little bit, I think you'll see some residue of, of white lithium grease. So that's the factory. So the factory, for whatever reason, wanted white lithium in this area. So that's what I'm gonna go back with is white lithium grease. If, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. So, um, but now my, a starter rebuilder fella he liked I guess this red grease on all the bronze bushings so on the bronze bushings that's where I'm putting the red grease but uh, on the spiral here I'm going to put the lithium grease like what I found when I took it out of it and you see on the Bendix side I've got the red grease in there and I've already put me a some red grease down there on my pilot bearing so we're getting pretty close to getting this back together and give it a test test run here. Just get a little more lithium grease on this dude. I like this little dowel rod. I stole this out of my wife's uh, uh, craft section she has. And her popsicle sticks too she has. Those came in handy. Alright, that's probably more than enough. And I also noticed as I disassembled it, they had white lithium on these plastic parts. All right. Let me smooth this around a little bit more on, on all the pieces. All the pieces parts. i put this kind of centered so I don't knock the uh, lithium grease up in there with all the red grease. Okay. Hmm. Here we go. That wasn't so hard. I just got to get this back on here, but I got to get it lined up properly. Let me look at my marks again. Now, wait a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself, aren't I? Because I got to keep this Bendix from flying off. That's where these two little pieces go. It's one thing you don't want any extra parts. 
So uh, let me get me uh, another tool here for this this part. Okay, these can sometimes be a little bit of a pain, so I don't know how it's going to go. Because you've got to put this on first, and you got to squeeze this ring, and it kind of snaps all back in, in together. So you can see we've got to get it fit down in this little groove and get this locking ring back in place. So let's get some channel locks and see if we can't squeeze it into place. Tricky part is getting this to lock, lock again. How are we going to achieve that exactly? Let me think. Let's try this way. Put some grease on it, maybe that'll help. Okay, I've changed positions. I put this, put it over here in the vise. Where's it at? There it is. I can get my camera over here. So I've changed tack. Hmm. So I've changed tactics. I think this is going to work. I took this section back off, put it in the vise. So I've got me two 7 16 wrenches, and they fit just right. And I think if I apply the right amount of pressure. Oh, there she went. Did you get that in camera? I hope I did. Snapped right in place. All right. There might be easier ways, but that worked pretty good for me. All right. Uh, back to the regular camera view. All right. So like I mentioned earlier, when I first took this apart, I, I noted it had lithium grease on, on this plastic parts and on the spiral thing. So going to get me my, my lithium grease put back on there like I found it and have it on this piece here too give me a little dab more too much. Just like so. Fuck my crazy hands off. Do this at the same time. I'm trying to keep everything in the camera shot. There we go. All right, get my little, where's my scratch marks? Get them all lined up here. Line up, line up. There they are. There's my marks are lined up. Awesome possum, looking like a starter. All right, time for the solenoid. Once again, a little dab of grease. Let me see here. Line that up. Nope, we need to turn it around. How about we go like this? That looks better. That's the way it came apart. Just like that. Now then. Two 
two nuts, 10 millimeter socket. Well, chain sockets would help. This is kind of unique. I haven't really seen this before, but I guess it's all right. Usually they have like a big eye on there pressed on, but they do it differently. Being, I guess this is a Nip and Denso built starter for Honda, if my research is right. Down to the final wire here, and this little skinny nut goes down here, I believe, by memory. The thicker locking nut went on top, what held the battery cable on. 12 millimeter socket. Good and snug. Nothing touching. It ain't supposed to touch. All right, now let me get my cable hooked back up and my little jumper wire and see how how this operates. All right, so got it hooked up just like it would be in the car. Got a good ground. Got the the where normally the positive biter cable would be, and then a little start terminal down here at the bottom. When you turn the key, you supply 12 volts to it. So I'm doing the same thing. When I touch this right here, we're going to apply 12 volts to the solenoid. The solenoid should engage, spin the starter, and jump the Bendix out at the same time. Just like that. That sounds pretty good to me. What do you think? Well, it's got a good jump to it. All right, now just gonna put it back in the car. And for this Honda Fit, it's a pain. Now I didn't stop and make a video showing how to get this out. I'll put a link because there's plenty of videos showing how to get these in and out. They're they're they're, they're a little bug, a bit of a bugger. Ain't a whole lot of fun, but it's doable. You do want a good quality ratchet. That's, that's one tip I can tell you. Because if you've got a floppy ratchet, get you a Mac, a good craftsman or something. If you have a cheap ratchet, it's going to give you a fit. Like, if you had something like this, that'd be awful. Because it's got too much slop in it. It's so tight in there, you get like one click, one click at a time to get the bolts loose. So, if you're going, when you go to pull your starter, make sure you got a good, uh, good ratchet. So... I guess my next step is put this back in the car and then see if it starts. Well, I said I wasn't going to show you how to put the starter on because there are plenty of videos out there, but I thought I'd point out a couple things that may be helpful to you. First of all, for the top bolt, get your good long extension, wobble joint, what 14 millimeter socket. Let me show you how that, how that works out here. I've already got it tight, but there's the bolt we're aiming for, right down there. So let's get the socket in place. Can you see it? Let me change the camera there. All right, there you go. You can see the socket. That's where it's on there. Can you see where it ends up back over here by the alternator? And then get you a good quality ratchet. I mean, I was talking about ratchets earlier, about the quality. You want a nice tight ratchet. These Pittsburghs from Harbor Freight are pretty good. It's got a nice tight click. I think you get about, if you go from 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock position all the way around, I think I got about 40 clicks out of it, 40 something clicks. Now my Mac, which I thought would be pretty good, it only gave me 32 clicks. So it's not quite as good a ratchet as far as uh, 
it's, it's got a quite a bit of slop to it so that's what I mean you sometimes you need a tight ratchet uh, on some of these now my best best ratchet uh, this half inch strap hits for like 70 clicks uh, in, a, in, a full circle, full, in a full circle my best ratchet though is this right here this is a uh, old old ratchet what's it uh, UH Williams USA it's called a super ratchet what's its number if you're finding one of these somewhere at a flea market B52 super ratchet let me show you on that. Let me get my. Here we go. Now this thing, it has, it is like super tight. It has a total of like 80 or 82 clicks, all the way around. So I'll get into the car and show you what I mean. All right. Let's see if we can. Yeah, let me see if we can see here what we're doing. All right. There's the ratchet on the lower bolt. So see what I mean? We don't have much room. To get so there's one couple clicks so I'm getting like one I'm getting two clicks per bite using my half inch drive ratchet now let's switch to my old wore out craftsman okay old wore out craftsman let's see what, how much we get on it so I can barely get one click but it is working for me. But it just barely I have to push on it to get that first click. So that's what I mean. You need a, a decent quality ratchet. Get her good and snug and you'll be good to go with your starter. All right, the next tricky place is these two little connectors. So you got that connector that goes on your solenoid. The other one is, I believe it's an oil pressure switch which you can see the switch right there and now uh, they connect the solenoid you can't really see once you get the starter installed but you can feel for it you can get the ideal it goes right above that that decal but just push those in until they click and you'll have that that part done then the last step because you've already got your starter off you already know you got to get your dipstick in now I got lucky my dipstick came out fairly easy but I did see some videos where people had problems getting the dipstick out one fellow made him a little tool like a, with a slide hammer and got hooked in here where he could give it a, a yank and slowly pull it out it was a really rusty car so if your car has been up north and experienced a lot of rust this dipstick may be your worst part to deal with as far as getting the starter off but I was lucky mine came out pretty easy all right, for the final test here, it got down about 25 degrees last night. You see the heavy frost. Can you see out of the car? And this is when it would always make that racket nearly every time. Let's see how it does. Look at there, no noise, no racket. So keep our fingers crossed. I think we have this problem solved.